Whether you're just researching on how to sell on Amazon or you've been selling on Amazon for quite some time, you're bound to make some mistakes and that's okay. But I do think I can save you some time. I've compiled a list of common mistakes that Amazon sellers make right from the very beginning when they're researching a product all the way up to the point where their Amazon business is up and running. So I've broken this video down into three sections. The first section is gonna be when you're just looking to sell on Amazon. The second session is gonna be when you just started selling on Amazon. And the third section is gonna be when you've been selling on Amazon. So without wasting any time, let's get into it. The first issue is that they don't do any research. This may seem super obvious to a lot of us, but there are people out there who just think of a product, don't do any research, just say, yeah, it'll probably sell, and then go ahead and sell it. This is a sure way to failure. So what's the solution? Do your own research also known as DYOR. You can easily grasp product research by just watching a few YouTube videos and maybe using a software like Helium 10. The second common mistake we see is picking the wrong niche. Contrary to what you might already believe, competition is actually a good thing because it means there's demand. If there's no demand, even if you rank on page one, the sales won't be there and the product will not be profitable. Now, if you see listings in a niche and all of the top listings on page one have hundreds if not thousands of reviews, it might mean that the competition is a little too stiff. Another sign that the competition is a little too much for you to compete on is if there's household brand names ranking at the top spots. So here's a quick example. Say you're looking to sell a French press coffee maker. Well, if Keurig is making one, chances are that 99.99% .99 of people are gonna go with that brand because they know it and trust it rather than taking a chance and buying your product, even if your product is superior. Then on the other end of the spectrum where there's no demand, if you look at a niche and the top ranked listing only has nine reviews, it probably means that there's no demand and you should not be in that niche. So what's the solution here? This kind of encompasses the first point. It's doing your own research and finding a middle ground. You need to find a niche where there's enough market demand, but also not so much that you can't carve your own way into the niche and pull a profit. The third mistake would be picking a less than ideal product. Some products are easier to sell than others, so don't overcomplicate it for your first product. I've created a list of products that are a little harder to sell than others. The first one I'll talk about is electronics. They can become obsolete quickly, they can be costly to source, and there's a lot of chances for something to go wrong with them, which can lead to high return rates. The next one I'll talk about is clothing. Now clothing can go out of style really quickly, as well sizing and durability issues can lead to lots of returns. Now let's talk about perishables. This includes supplements, skincare, and foods. The reason being is a lot of these products have a finite shelf life and can expire. So if you don't understand inventory management and you don't move the product quick enough, a product can expire and then your investment in the inventory has gone down the drain. Seasonal items, you've probably heard this before to not get involved with them, but unless you understand seasonal items and inventory management is down pat, I would not even bother. They are a logistical nightmare and are not sustainable for 99% of people. Super trendy items, remember fidget spinners back in 2016? Or remember hoverboards back in 2018? Have you heard much about them recently? I didn't think so. Picking items because of a trend can turn very bad very quickly. And unless you're one of the first ones to start selling them, do not even bother. Trendy items are not sustainable business models and once the trend is over, you could be stuck with thousands in inventory that you won't be able to move. All right, so the last one is picking an item that's too expensive or too cheap. You pick an item that's too cheap and there won't be enough of a profit margin for it to be worth your while. 
If you pick one that's too expensive, it no longer becomes an impulse purchase. If it's a little bit more money, they might have to think twice about buying the product before they actually do, and they might end up just leaving the product in their cart rather than purchasing it on the spot. So most experts recommend when you're first starting out, your first product should be able to sell for around $20 to $50. So now let's move on to section two and look at some common mistakes that sellers make who are just starting out. So the first common mistake we see is sellers not reinvesting in their own business. You start making a few sales, you see a bit of money get into that bank account and you instantly want to spend it. I mean, it's understandable. Now, a lot of sellers haven't had this money before, so they go out and they start buying some nicer clothes, go out for more fancy dinners, but they don't reinvest any of it back into the company. It's fine to take profits. After all, this is what you're doing it for, but taking profits too early can hurt your business in the long run. So what's the solution here? At least for the first few months, it's recommended that you reinvest a majority of your earnings back into the business. Reinvesting early on will allow you to scale the business much faster. Remember, Amazon is still a competition. If you're not reinvesting in your business, the competition will be reinvesting in theirs and they can surpass you. So the next common mistake, and this is gonna be number five, is failure to innovate. So say there's a product on the market that's identical to the one you're sourcing but they've been selling on Amazon for quite a long time now and they have hundreds if not thousands of reviews. So why in the world would somebody buy your identical product with no reviews? The answer is they wouldn't. So what's the solution here? You need to come up with what I like to call version 2.0. If you want to sell that type of product, you need to improve it, add some value. Now you may be asking, how do I know what to add? A great way to figure this out is look at the reviews of your competitors, good and bad. What are they saying? Is there some issue that the other products are having where you could go to your product, add something and fix that issue? Maybe you could provide better quality fabric or maybe you can provide a bundled option. It could also just be as simple as offering more colors or offering it in a more attractive pattern. Each time you place a new order with your supplier, think to yourself, can I improve this product? Each time you're looking to make another order for your supplier, you should always be thinking about whether you and your supplier can develop a new way to add value to your product. If you want to command a higher price down the road, the way to do that is by adding more value. Don't stay stagnant, create the best product you possibly can and get that product 2.0. All right, the next common mistake we see is number six and not having an optimized listing. This is a business killer on Amazon. Good photos, good copy, A plus content and videos are critical to the success of your listing. Photos that you took on your phone just aren't gonna cut it in this game. I would never buy a product that looks like they just took the images off an iPhone, would you? Of course not. Well, maybe you would, I don't know. Amazon is such a competitive marketplace and you have about half a second to impress a buyer to click on your listing. Even if your product is of higher quality and offers better functions, if you don't communicate that to the potential buyer, I guarantee they're gonna pick your competitor with better listing images. So what's the solution here? Get your images professionally done and better yet, get your listing optimized professionally. Here at AMZ One Step, we offer full service listing optimization. We do images, copy, A plus content, and so much more. If you want help creating the best possible optimized listing, or you just wanna improve your existing one, get in contact with us. There's gonna be a link in the description below. All right, on to the final section. Now let's look at some common mistakes that even existing Amazon sellers make. We're gonna now look at number seven, no inventory management. You won't believe how many existing sellers selling on Amazon still don't understand inventory management. They just keep ordering the same amount of product each time, not looking at forecasts and not looking at previous sales data. Not paying attention to this can lead to you running out of stock and missing out on a lot of sales opportunities. 
As well, if you're out of stock and a customer is looking for your type of product, they'll simply buy your competitors. On the other end, if you overstock and have a lot of inventory in the Amazon warehouse and your sell through rate isn't great, you could end up racking up a ton in storage fees. This is another instance of doing your own research and understanding the concept better. Once you understand the concept of inventory management, then you can look to get a software that can help you with that. And I know Jungle Scout offers one. Efficiently managing your inventory will help you to avoid unnecessary costs and will help you to scale up your business. The eighth mistake I will bring up is a lack of PPC management. Not understanding PPC can be detrimental to the success of your listing. And if you use PPC correctly, it can boost your sales immensely. If you use it incorrectly, it probably won't do much except burn a hole in your pocket. So what's the solution here? This is another case of doing your own research and understanding keywords and ranking first. You need to understand which keywords you should be ranking for and how much you need to delegate towards PPC. Helium 10 offers some really great insight into how you manage keywords, ranking, and they have a lot of information available on their podcasts as well as on their YouTube channel. Utilizing the Helium 10 software will allow you to better understand this concept. As well, you can always hire somebody to do your PPC management for you. But in order to vet how legitimate they are, you do need to understand the basics and need to know what you're looking for to see if they're doing a good job or not. All right, the final common mistake I'll mention, number nine, starting a second product too soon. Oftentimes people find a little success on Amazon and then they're instantly thinking about what product can I add to my product line next? Meanwhile, their first product is still in infancy. It's not even ranking on page one yet and still needs a lot of attention. When they switch their view too quickly, their first product isn't getting the attention it needs to grow and scale. As a result, the first product ends up suffering with its sales, inventory management, and so on. So what's the solution? Take it one step at a time. Don't overextend yourself. Your first product should be well ranked and have all the attention it needs to grow before you look elsewhere to expand your brand. All right, conclusion time. There you have it, nine common mistakes all Amazon sellers make and how to avoid them. A lot of it comes down to just being aware that a lot of mistakes are made within a certain area and then doing your research on the subject and figuring out how to fix it. One of the biggest points you can take away from this video is don't get ahead of yourself and take it one step at a time. If you understand a concept but you still want help, there's always professionals that you can hire to help you with that aspect of your business. I feel like there's still a few common mistakes that I've failed to mention in this video, so maybe I'll make a part two, we'll see. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing as it helps out the channel. I make videos every week about Amazon FBA subjects, so if you wanna be the best Amazon seller you can be, it's probably a good idea to subscribe. By the way, if I missed any and you've had some common mistakes not mentioned, please drop them in the comment section below because I wanna see what other people are going through as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.